How to cope with an avoidant partner. If you're in a relationship with someone who's avoiding intimacy, that is so hard on your soul, your spirit, even your body. You are taking a toll. Our research shows it's actually traumatic for you. Now, if you're new to our channel, please subscribe. Do that. If you have a question, we always want you to put it in the box. We get to them as soon as we possibly can. An avoidant partner is someone who is really keeping themselves so busy that they have no time for you. Now, I'm not talking about productive busy like overworking, although that can be. It can be being on social media. It can be watching news. It can be following stock markets. It could be, you know, working on an antique car. It can be uh, volunteering at the schools or, or, or your church or your um, political community. It is a way of avoiding you. Now, you might want to find out what's going on here. You know, ask it what's going on in the relationship. If they're, if they're, what they feel about the relationship. You know, let them know that you're feeling alone and disconnected. And if you're feeling married and alone, that could be a whole different animal. If you're, if if they have intimacy anorexia, I want you to Google that. But let me give it to you. Um, that's the active avoidance of spiritual, emotional, and sexual intimacy. It's characterized by these things, being too busy for you, blaming you for the uh, problems in the relationship, withholding love, especially the way you like to be loved and you told them you like to be loved, uh, withholding praise, withholding spiritually, uh, withholding sex or being disconnected during sex. So if you feel alone during sex, that would count as well. Uh, unwilling to share their feelings with you or unable, um, using anger or silence as a way to control you in the relationship having ongoing or uh, ungrounded criticism of you. Sometimes they control around money, but you definitely feel married and alone. Well, if that's the situation, definitely get more information on our channel or uh, on Intimacy Anorexia, or feel free to give us a call at the office. But an avoidant person is someone who may be uh, struggling with schizoid personality disorder. They really don't have a desire to connect to you. Now, sometimes they might be on the spectrum okay, uh, on the autism spectrum. And that's not something that they necessarily are doing intentionally. Like intimacy anorexia is intentional. Uh, that kind of stuff would not be. Uh, they might be suffering from depression in a severe way, but in a severe way, like they don't go to work, they don't get out of bed. That would be someone who's really struggling with depression to the point where it's impacting you and avoiding you. And if you're feeling avoidant, you need to be able to take care of yourself because there is a high possibility that they may not want to change. And if they don't want to change, you're going to go through grief. You're going to go through anger. Okay. You're going to go through bargaining. If I do this, if I do that, they'll, they'll love me. They'll, you'll be like the little puppy always wanting to be petted. Okay. And you don't want to be that. You'll go through the sadness and then you go through accept it that I'm not going to be wanted in this relationship. Okay. I'm there for the photo ops. I'm there for the family pictures. I'm not there because you really want to be with my soul, my person, my being. Okay. And then you would just accept that. Now you might accept that and stay. You might have challenges in that. You might go to therapy, which is what I would strongly recommend you do if they're willing to do that. But if they're not willing to get counseling, you don't have to be limited to their choice. You can, we have counselors who are, are trained in, in the married and loan, the partner betrayal trauma. Also ask about their pornography usage, ask them if they're being sexual with themselves, ask the hard questions, because especially if you're not being sexual, the chance of them being involved in something with themselves or with images or with others is a potential. And you might want to get to the bottom of that. So asking those questions, going into counseling can help if they're willing to really work on the issues. And I'm not talking about for a week or two, because sometimes people show up for a week or two and then it goes back to the same old thing. Okay. We have a whole DVD called pain for love. You know, I gotta be in pain for you to love me. I gotta yell and scream divorce or separation for you to show up for a couple weeks. If you're in that cycle, that probably is intimacy anorexia. Now to, to deal with the avoidant partner, you want to have good self care. Cause if you're going to stay in a dysfunctional marriage or a dysfunctional relationship, you only have two choices, adaptation or leave. Now under adaptation, you have two choices, healthy or unhealthy. Okay. You can be abusive with food and gain a lot of weight or not eat. Okay. That would be dysfunctional way. All right. You might uh, over exercise. I'm not talking about balance. Everyone should have a balanced exercise life, but you might get super involved with that. 
You might medicate through reading or, or social media. You might medicate through entertainment and watching 15, 20, 30 hours of TV a week, which is avoiding a relationship, all right? And you might um, do something like where you get into yoga or something uh, where you volunteer or over volunteer. But if you're having to adapt and get your needs met outside the relationship, and I don't mean in an inappropriate way, although some people medicate that way. If you're avoided, you go have affairs, you go, you go online and get all these intrigue uh, addiction relationships going where people want you, but you don't really go and do anything bad, right? But you keep that emotional energy going and that's dysfunctional, all right? But if you're finding that, hey, I got to talk to my girlfriends or my, if you're a man and you're being avoided, you know, you got to talk to some guys and just feel like, you know, people talk to you like as a person, all right? You will have to adapt. So good self-care, taking care of yourself physically, make sure your nutrition's good. Make sure you're getting some exercise. Um, make sure that you're getting good sleep, okay? Make sure you get your thyroid and your hormones checked because being neglected can affect both of those. Okay, good self-care there. Self-care spiritually, get in a spiritual community, you know, read the scriptures, do something positive for yourself where you can get grounded on a regular basis spiritually, okay? Socially, have a group of friends that you do talk to. And if you're being touch deprived, healthy massages, don't go to inappropriate places, okay? Licensed people, be safe with that. If you need to be touched, you might have to take care of yourself in a better way because your system is taking neglect. And if you're being neglected, you have to not be part of that. You need to really care for yourself and love yourself and make sure that you're taking care of yourself in really good ways so that you can be as healthy as you can be in this starvation relationship, okay? And if they're married to themselves and not married to you, this can go on for decades and you're gonna be in pain we have a whole book called Partner Betrayal Trauma, which we did research on women who've experienced infidelity, sexual addiction, or intimacy anorexia, which is this avoidant type personality. And so what we found is the impact on a woman, PTSD, depression, self-esteem, sexual self-esteem, etc., was exactly the same as if a man cheated. And men have impacts from being neglected as well. There's men who are avoided by their wives and they're in just as much pain and they don't know where to go. If either, if this is you being the avoided person or you are experiencing the trauma of living with this, you might want to talk to someone who's really trained in this area. I would encourage you to call our office, okay? You might want to get the book Married and Alone. There's a DVD called uh, uh, Sexless and Married, if that's what you're suffering with. It gives you lots of ideas on maybe why this is happening in your marriage. But you need to take your next step. If we can be a part of that, we'd love to help you.